Hola amigos, soy David de Who for Mundo Animal. Como sabéis, hace unas semanas tuvimos la suerte de ir a visitar TMC Iberia en Portugal. Allí coincidimos con el equipo de Tropic Marine, que nos dio una conferencia súper interesante. Además, también tuvimos ocasión de charlar con Hans Werner Balling, que es el creador del método Balling tan conocido por todos vosotros. Así que no os perdáis esta charla tan interesante que nos da Marcus Bengel, que es el director de Tropic Marine, y al final el mismísimo Balling contestará preguntas del público. I will do the talk, he's open for any questions because he's better in answering the questions, I'm just the CEO, he's the, <laughs> he's the brain of the company. Um, so, I want to give you, um, as it's written there, um, a short overview from tradition to innovation. It's only three topics I would like to talk to you. Um, we started in 1964 with one salt, which was called classic sea salt. Um, now we have four salts. How do we get there? Um, we have a huge range of products, but maybe it's too much. I would like to discuss this and show some ideas we have. Um, and We always have to go uh, uh, to, a, to a climate, so let's talk a little bit about the history from Kalkwasser to what we call carbocalcium. So we speak about carbon uh, dosing, uh, calcium and alkalinity. Okay, let's start with the first uh, one. Do you see here, also there, it's four different salts. Why do we need four different salts? Just. Uh, To, to start it, it's one salt for fish tanks only, where fish are in only, and three salts for um, reef tanks. So, um, at the beginning, everything started with the classic sea salt, right? Which is for fish tanks only. We have a higher alkalinity in there, um, lower calcium and magnesium. If we reach the magnesium and calcium too high, we have precipitation of the, um, of the alkalinity, of the carbonates. So in all the other three salts, um, we have a lower alkalinity, but a higher calcium and magnesium concentration for reef tanks. And then it's quite easy. Our Pro Reef, which is the traditional, the classic salt from a Tropic Marine, uh, we sell this all around the world. Um, um, everybody knows it. That's the basic salt if you start a reef tank. But if you want to have it a little bit easier and comfortable, um, we said, okay, take the Pro Reef and um, let's add um, food for bacteria, carbon dosing in the salt. And this is what we then call the bioactive salt. So there you have an organic compound, a carbon dosing compound, food for bacteria in. This is our bioactive. And the third one, which is the symbiotic um, salt, um, we put in addition to the carbon dosing also bacteria. So you have a salt which is based on the Pro Reef, same as Pro Reef, but you have Uh, they're in bacteria and food for bacteria. So this salt is a perfect salt to start your tank immediately, right? You don't have to grow the bacteria. Um, it, 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 it starts really rapidly. There are another 152 or 53 tropic marine products. How to use them? This is too much. And this was the same, people told me all around the world, your products are very, very good, but it's so much products, how shall we understand them? It's too much, we have no idea about it. <coughs> And this was why we came up with our, let's say it, easy start into the tropic marine system, we call it a basic care kit. We divide in two sections. The one is the basic care kits and products for professionals. Let's focus on the basic care kits. Actually, it's quite easy. We have these guides here. You have it in your, in your bags as well. What do you need for a basic care kit? What do you need to start uh, uh, running a tank or to run a tank if you don't want to change much things, just to run it easy, right? You need, of course, your salt. You need a kind of bacteria and food for bacteria, what we already talked about is. Um, this would be our Tropic Marine Reef Active, which is the food for bacteria, carbon dosing, and our nitribiotic, which is the bacteria itself. And you need 
not for the fish tank, but for the reef tank, you need minerals, strontium, potassium, vanadium, whatever in the sea is. There are more than 70 trace elements. You need these minerals, and of course you should measure from time to time. So we did a quite easy measuring set, which we call the compact lab. So, if we see basic care one, it's based on our sea salt for fish tank only. You need something for carbon dosing, you need bacteria and something for measuring. So it's one, two, three, four products where you can run your tank. If we go to the reef aquaria, which is quite easier, we have basic care two, three and four. Make this a little bit bigger here as well. And in basic care two, three and four, we have the different salts I told you already, the pro reef, the bioactive and the symbiotic. And this is the same here. In basic care two, we have the salt, pro reef, we have carbon dosing powder, which is the reef active, nitrobiotic, bacteria, minerals, which is the all for reef, they are all minerals in, and something to test. And then just the food for bacteria goes into the salt and we have the bioactive, which is basic care three. And in basic care four, like I told you before, just the carbon dosing, the food for the bacteria, and the bacteria went into the salt and we have the symbiotic salt, right? So in the easiest way, you have a salt where bacteria and food for bacteria is in, plus minerals, plus something to measure our compact lab. You need only three compounds to treat your tank, to start your tank or treat your tank. As we think, it's quite easy to get people understand this, to get them into the hobby, to find new people who are interested in the hobby, to make it easy to bring them there. Not too complicated. Of course, if your tank is running for a year, half a year or two years, you are a professional, you want to fix this coral more red, this more green uh, and so on. And therefore, we have a lot of other products. Um, but this is not a catalog, this answers your questions, right? If you're looking for trace minerals or minerals, um, if you want to raise the carbon hardness, it guides you automatically to a product. I want to talk a little bit more about minerals and trace elements, calcium and alkalinity. What do we need and what do we want in our tank? We want to grow corals. Let's say we want to grow corals. To grow corals, we need lime, which is the skeleton of the corals. This lime, chemists say it's calcium carbonate, right? There is no solid or liquid which is ready to use into the water up to now, which is calcium carbonate. We need other chemical salts to form this compound, to form this skeleton, right? We do with th this up to now with calcium and calcium bicarbonate, yeah? sodium bicarbonate. In history there are different methods. Um, the oldest one known from 1971, so everybody knows it's only calcium hydroxide so solution. Um, don't so let's talk that long about this. It's not the best method um, to get calcium and alkalinity for skelet growing because it's limited by the solubility um, of calcium chloride. It's limited by the demand uh, for top up water, right? You cannot replace that. You don't get very much uh, of it in it. And it's a strong pH increase, right? So it's a product which is very good suited for pH increase better than for calcification of invertebrates. Next method. Since 1994, we know the calcium reactor. What you need is lime, some CO2, and some water. Easy. If you once have installed the system, which is technical not that easy, so you use it for bigger tanks, then it's fine. It's running quite well, it's working, it's cheap, but it's a technical challenge and maybe for smaller tanks not the best method. In the same year, 1994, Hans-Werner Balling, ta-ta, <laughs> um, he found the Balling method. Why, why, why did he do this? What was the problem? Um, up to this point there was no simple method 
to combine calcium and alkalinity um, to use it in every marine tank. Because calcium bicarbonate, which is the base uh, of calcium bicarbonate supply, does not exist as a soluble sub substance, right? This is what, what we need in the water, what is the skeleton of the corals. Um, it, it needs to be formed in the water. There is no powder or anything which you could just put in the water up to now and forms this skeleton, right? All the products you need minimum two. So the goal was to develop a method which supply of inorganic salts, <coughs> inorganic salts, chlorides, sulfates and so on and combine this to calcium bicarbonate. And the result was um, these basic salts were always calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. It was quite simple. You took two salts, calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate, put it in the water and it formed that lime. This is what we call the bulling method. Let's go a little bit into detail to the bulling method because there are a lot of different bulling methods uh, on the market at the moment. But all are based on the two major components which are inorganic salts. Please remember this, inorganic salts. I come back to this a little bit later and I will talk then about organic salts. So these inorganic salts are in bulling A, the calcium chloride and in bulling B, um, the sodium B or hydrocarbonate, right? You always need these two and they form, it's like in the weather forecast, they never know where they touch. <laughs> they form the lime, the calcium carbonate which grows the coral. This is in each, is it bulling, bulling light, uh, A, B, C, whatever the companies call it. It's always these two salts. But what the most forget, if you combine these two salts into water, you generate a third salt. You generate sodium chloride, which is simply cooking salt. So you have too much cooking salt, sodium chloride, in the water. All the other salts around, uh, which we have in our pro reef salt, are not there. So you need a third component, which is C, which is just simple sea salt without sodium chloride. So then again, you have um, the right concentration or ionic balance in the water. There are a lot of other methods called bulling or not bulling. They just forget that this sodium chloride is formed and you need to balance it, right? You don't add anything more with C. You just balance the sodium chloride that you have, your, in, uh, your organic salt balance in the water, not too much sodium chloride. Come back to this a little later. So, so bulling A, B, C. The bulling method today is the most widespread method for calcium and alkalinity supply in marine tanks. Although there are different modifications available in the trade, all are based on the supply of inorganic salts, calcium chloride, sodium bicarbonate. All modifications of the bulling method ought to provide the following. They want to supply calcium, they want to supply alkalinity, and they do supply calcium and they do supply alkalinity, because this is not easy. Supply of calcium and alkalinity should be done in a stoichiometric ratio. This is for the chemists, right? But it needs to be the same amount of both. Balancing the unavoidable supply of sodium and chloride ions of the inorganic salt, right? You need something to balance the sodium chloride which occurs out of this reaction. And this is not in each method the case. A little bit different, but the same. We have bulling A, calcium chloride, plus bulling B, which gives sodium B carbonate, and it forms this target product, what we want. This is the coral. This is the lime of the coral. It reacts here. But don't forget, we produce a side product, right? a byproduct, sodium chloride, and we have bulling C for NaCl free salt. Okay, last picture to this. So, conclusion of the bulling method. I told you something uh, in the calc reactor, uh, we have, could have problems with phosphate, we have no problem with phosphate here because the salts, inorganic salts, are quite clear. In our salts, it's pharma quality, um, pharmaceutical quality. Um, I don't know the others. You can get a lot of different qualities of salt, of contaminations or no contaminations. We have no te technical equipment necessary. Um, corrections are possible with one of the components, which means I can add the components 
separately, if I see I have two less calcium in my tank, I can add baling A. If I see my alkalinity drops down, I can add baling B only, right? So I can change these parameters to get the equilibrium back. And in baling C, I have all the main and trace elements, which I can add also separately. So when applied correctly, you have a perfect ionic balance and no elevation of trace elements in the tank. No elements, no tra ele elevation of trace elements, cooking salt in the tank. No pH shift and increase of salinity should be balanced without water changes. So the perfect system up to now. This is why nearly each company selling um, aquarium products have a kind of the bulling method and selling a kind of bulling method. Okay, now I need a little bit your concentrations. Everything clear up to now? I told you a lot of inorganic salts, like cooking salt, like calcium chloride, like sodium carbonate. We change now a little bit the universe, right? We go to organic calcium salts. And this is really new. That's the only product of the world can do this. Question, what are organic salts? Organic compounds are vinegar. Everything which has a carbon atom in it, right? Um, acids, all acids we know. Um, sugars, um, glucose, fructose. All these are organic compounds based on a carbon chain. Carbon, 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 carbon. Some oxygen, some hydrogen. Salt means always you have something positive and something negative. Positive and negative goes together, it's a salt, right? If it's a salt like this, which is solid, they stick together. If you dissolve it in water, the ions go away. The plus goes this way, the minus goes this way. They feel free and do a lot of fun. We have organic compound with some reaction, we can make it to a negative compound, right? And with this organic negative compound, um, for example, an organic acid anion, we have the perfect part to get an organic salt. We have this negative compound again here, and let's say we add calcium to this. We have a calcium salt which has an organic part. In this case, we call it calcium formate, right? And this is now really um, the revolution because we have only one product. We put it into water and it forms exactly what we want. The calcium carbonate, the skeleton of, um, of, the, of the corals. Three inorganic salt mixes to get this result. It was quite easy, but you need three inorganic um, compounds. Now, in 2018, we developed a one compound product, the carbocalcium. We have the carbocalcium, which is a calcium formate. It's only one compound. You put it in the water. You can put it directly in your tank, um, and it forms your skeleton of the corals, calcium and alkalinity. You can put it as solid material, but it's high concentrated, right? So only the solid material for bigger tanks. In tanks with 100 or 200 liter, you even have not a small enough spoon to dissolve it in there. And the idea about this is, okay, we have a liquid form as well, right? This is not that concentrated for smaller <coughs> tanks. And, of course, since 2018, science went on. We developed a product, what we called All for Reef, you find it out there as well, um, which is based on the same, the carbocalcium, but we added all trace elements you need. So, you have with the All for Reef a product which is really includes calcium, alkalinity, and all minerals you need, right? So, the people which like to have only one product because they don't want to care about everything, they take the All for Reef. People who said, oh no, my minerals, I want to, to dose them separately because I know this coral needs this, 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 they use the carbocalcium. And people who want to dose calcium and alkalinity separately because they just want it or they used to do it, they should take the bulling method. Conclusions on organic calcium salts on calcium formate base, which is the carbocalcium. It's really a revolution of calcium and alkalinity. It's the only product at the moment uh, which needs only one component. It's a completely new reaction mechanism, right? The difference between inorganic and organic chemistry. 
Maybe you can read this at Wikipedia again. I needed to read it also sometimes, right? Inorganic and organic compounds. So it's no inorganic salts, no byproducts, no pH shift, no increase on salinity, no precipitates, much more efficient than inorganic salts. So an advancement is possible, like I showed you with the oil for reef. We can use this base and this knowledge um, like really uh, a new generation. It's I, a new generation of products. I, I also saw it in an um, in, uh, interview and I was very impressed about what you were showing uh, and you were talking about the concentration. The, the amount of uh, product that you get here compared to what you used to get in, in, other, uh, in the other body method, you had that those big tubes, yes. the, the difference, the concentration in this is, is, is just really amazing. Yes, we, we need to say it's really amazing the concentration, but um, we did the liquid one because most of you want to sell something, right? <laughs> so um, it's not good if this is good for one year. So the liquid one is, 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 is better that the customer comes yes. back to the shop, Correct. right? Um, Okay, so this will go on. Based on this organic compounds, we will go on and do a lot of different, um, a lot of different products. Let me summarize a little bit. First topic, I showed you and explained a little bit the difference of our sea salts, right? We started in 1964 with the fish salt only. Um, higher alkalinity, lower magnesium and calcium, then we have the three salts for uh, the reef tanks. I explained to you that in our pro reef the food for bacteria and the bacteria go in and we end up by the symbiotic. Um, I was happy to explain to you a little bit how do we think can we make the huge product range of Tropic Marine easier, right? You can start with three to five products a tank or can run a tank frequently. And I think the, the take-home message and the big, big uh, new one for today is um, the development from Kalkwasser to Carbocalcium, right? To get only one compound which you put in the water and you have um, calcium and alkalinity, right? If you use it, um, it can take a little bit longer than in the inorganic salt, so it can take some hours before you can measure it, but it's already in, right? Don't forget this. So, this is really our, what we call uh, a revolution or evolution with an R. We start with the Kalkwasser and end up like uh, uh, we walk today with the all for reef and the carbocalcium. So at this point, I just can say thank you very much. We are open uh, to all questions. Um, so answering the question is now his part. <laughs> so thank you very much for the moment. It's a, it's a boiling method at salt, so it stays in water while carbocalcium only adds calcium and uh, organic carbon and both is incorporated into the skeleton. There, uh, um, nothing remains in the water, so nothing needs to be balanced. So, so basically, uh, well, uh, I think what, what, what he's asking, <coughs> uh, the, the, the corals need the, the, need the magnesium, uh, and we usually introduce it in, in the tanks because in our mind the corals need the magnesium. Yes. But actually what we're doing is using the magnesium to balance out the, the sodium chloride. And with that we would only, only need the amount of magnesium needed for the corals which yes. should be present yes. in the salt itself, in the yes. normal sea exactly. salt yeah. itself. Uh, the, the demand of corals uh, for magnesium is very low. Uh, most uh, magnesium goes into the calcareous uh, red algae. But if you do regular water changes with Pro Reef, you will add enough uh, magnesium to stay at the natural level around 1300. Because uh, Pro Reef is slightly over concentrated by 1350, 1380 ppm magnesium. And this adds enough uh, magnesium to keep the natural level even when um, red algae removes some of the magnesium. Okay, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe this question arises because there are some bulling products on the market where the magnesium is added in compound two or something like this, right? Um, but to, to make it a little bit clearer, for the skeleton, we don't need the magnesium. For the skeleton, we need the lime, the calcium and the carbonate. So the coral grows with this. And all the other elements, potassium, magnesium, which goes into the skeleton of the corals, are nice for them, right? So we have it 
in Baling Sea, if you need it, want to dose it, it's in Baling Sea, or on the Alpha Reef then, right? <coughs> we think you don't need it, or we have it as a separate product, the, the biomagnesium, of yes. course, right? <coughs> also, you can check with the test kit and add uh, magnesium as biomagnesium. From what I understand, we don't need uh, the Baling methods anymore. For our clients, we only have to sell them all for, for Reef. So yeah. where does it stay, the Baling yes, it's, system? It's, it's correct. Uh, you, you can still use the salt. He developed the carbocalcium as well, right? <laughs> you won't go and enjoy it. <laughs> but you can still use the salts of the balling method A, B, and C uh, to um, balance your um, conditions before you start, for example, with carbocalcium. You can, if your um, calcium concentration is high, you only add uh, component B, which is sodium B carbonate, to bring the uh, alkalinity pit up, or if the calcium is low, you only add uh, component A to, to raise the calcium. So basically, if it's a, a, a customer that wants to measure everything separately, yes. then the original balling method would be better. If it's one of a customer that wants it, wants to keep it simple and to make it easier, carbocalcium or also we would make it make it simpler. But what she's asking is, if, if we have, for instance, uh, alkalinity at, at a, a good level, but calcium mm -hmm. is low, yes. if we had the 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 um, all for reef, for instance, will it buffer out? Will it even out the the, the needs, or do we need to? Correct the calcium level first, the calcium level first, and then start adding uh, alpha reef to keep it stable. Uh, yes, uh, we recommend um, to to balance uh, uh, yeah uh, values before starting with alpha reef. Yes. Um, I never uh, experienced it myself uh, in my aquaria. Always calcium alkalinity. Uh, were consumed in a, in a balanced ratio, but I have very much, um, <coughs> yeah, I can say complaints, but remarks of aquarists who say they do have an um, imbalance removal, they need more um, alkalinity than calcium, mm -hmm. and for this you can still use uh, the budding salts, of course. Uh, we have one, I think we have one from Facebook, that was asking um, in the, the, um, the bioactive salt, um, which type of bacteria is present there and how is, uh, uh, and if th these components are already inserted in, in the bioactive salt. Uh, in the bioactive salt we have no bacteria, but we have bacterial food. Okay. Um, this uh, is uh, called also a prebiotic okay. uh, uh, substance that um, support the growth of beneficial bacteria. Okay. Uh, while in the symbiotic, we also have included bacteria. It's a, a probiotic bacteria. Maybe you know of um, milk products and yes. so on. Uh, these are bacteria that activate the immune system of the fish uh, to fend off uh, diseases, okay. especially for bacterial diseases. Okay. Thank you, too. Thank you for being here. And we would be very happy if you, you have, everybody has a, a, a little can of carbocalcium. Anybody has not, um, take one or take two, we have enough here. But it would be very kind if we could, if you get some reply of it, right? Bueno amigos, espero que este video os haya gustado. No olvidéis visitarnos en nuestra página web. Ya sabéis que hacemos envíos a toda España y a Baleares. Y ya sabes que cualquier duda que tengas sobre tu acuario te puedes poner en contacto conmigo en mi número de WhatsApp. Venga, nos vemos en próximos vídeos.